pregnant during the pandemic and that pregnancy was a lot different. I was very sick. Um, I was very anemic. Um, my hemoglobin got to be, was seven, got as low as seven. And so I was going in during that pregnancy every um, week for iron um, uh, injection or infusion. Infusion, yeah. So I would go to the um, infusion center and they would give me iron infusions. And then my hemoglobin ended up when I was in labor, my hemoglobin was 12. Um, so, and 12 is good, right? Because I don't know the numbers. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 12, low... is, 12, is, 12 is pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, in the normal. I've, I always tend to run a little bit low um, my whole life. So for me, 12 is baseline. And that's what they wanted. They wanted to get me back to, you know, back to baseline. Mm. And uh, so C this time C-section, because... It was C-section the first time or was it? No. So I, so, so with him, I had planned for a VBAC, which is a vaginal birth after cesarean section. So VBAC, vaginal birth after cesarean. So I went, I saw a chiropractor. I went for, uh, again, I went for um, acupuncture. I had d done, pr you know, prenatal yoga. Um, I had done all the stretches and everything that my OB and midwife, you know, told me to do. Um, and I was like, good to go. Uh, um, I really wanted a vaginal birth with him. Um, he was two days late. So my due date was October 24th. That came and went. <laughs> October 25th came and went. Um, October 26th, I woke up at four in the morning and I went to the bathroom and I, again, was like, you know, at this point, you know what labor feels like. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I think I'm like having contractions and I lost that mucus plug. So I told my husband, I was like, get ready. So this was 4 a.m. Um, we got to the hospital at 6 a.m. My contractions <laughs> were three minutes apart and I was eight centimeters dilated. Wow. Shoot, so it happened so fast. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't walk. They had to wheel me you know, like I couldn't walk from the car to the, to, um, labor and delivery. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you think that it was um, obviously the second time, usually things happen faster, but could it be that the yoga or the, the preparations that you had maybe helped? Yeah. I was drinking like, you know, um, uh, red or raspberry leaf. Oh yeah. Whatever. I had that. Eating yeah. dates and figs and <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All that stuff you're supposed to do. Yeah. So, you know, maybe. But also, what does a chiropractor? Um, how, what does he do? How does it help? Just kind of like helps to open up your pelvis. You know, they would adjust me. Crisis? Plus, I was having like such bad like sciatic pain. So they were they would just adjust me. Um, stretching, opening up your pelvis. You know, all that other stuff. So. Oh, okay. Hmm. And it just felt so good to go and get adjusted. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So we're, we're, everything is going well at this point. You're about to have natural <laughs> birth. And then what happens? Um, I had, I know this is like kind of might be too many, too much detail, but I had really bad vulvodynia. I don't know if you know what that is. It's where your vulva is in a lot of pain, um, when you're pregnant. So basically it felt like, like the outside of my my vagina was on fire. Um, they couldn't even touch me to check to see how dilated I was without me jumping off the table, screaming. It hurt so bad. Is it somehow connected to endometriosis? Do you think? It can be. It can be. Yeah. It's not necessarily, there's not necessarily a like cause and effect, but there's a correlation. Oh. Um, so again, my midwife doctor said, um, you know, we're afraid because you're in so much pain down there that you are going to be, you're going to want to push, but you're going to be so afraid of the baby coming out because it hurts so bad that yeah. it's your body's just going to kind of like fight itself, your body and mind. So they recommended an epidural. And at this point I was in so much pain because I had dilated so quickly. I was like, that's fine. <laughs> Give it to me. <laughs> Do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. And then they, um, so that they recommended C-section at this point. 
nope. Oh, so at this point, sure. so I had the epidural, you know, things calmed down. And I, at this point, re regretted, I was basically on my way to giving birth, but I had the epidural and it slowed, sorry, my computer, oh. it slowed everything down. Yeah. So I fell asleep because I couldn't feel the contractions anymore. Um, you know, and then I got to, I basically got to centime 10 centimeters and the fetal heart monitor kept going off. They had, they had lost him. They completely lost, kept losing his heart rate. So they were like, Michelle, we have to bring you in for a C-section. We need to get this baby out of you right now. Um, because his heart was dropping so quickly. So, and then at that point, then I'm like, oh my gosh, I just should have had a scheduled C-section. Like I've been through this before, but you know, in my mind, then I'm like, you know, my first son was okay. This, this one, you know, he'll be okay too. So they tell my husband, he calls both of our moms to tell them because, you know, it's during the pandemic. So no one's allowed in the hospital with us. Okay. So he calls both of our moms to tell them like Michelle's change of plans. Michelle's going in for a C-section again. And, but you know, we had been through this before, so they kind of, you know, knew what to expect. So, um, they, they wheel me in, I'm on the operating table. The one surgeon comes in, she starts cutting me open and she, I hear her just start cursing. And so she goes, you know, call the head surgeon. And then they did, she was like the head OB at, at the practice. And, um, She's like, there's too much endometriosis. I can't get to the baby. So basically she cut through, you know, they have to cut through your skin. They have to cut through muscle and they have to cut through your uterus. By the time they had cut through my uterus, my endometriosis was so bad. She said it, it looked like a, like basically like a spider web around the baby. Wow. And they had to saw through that to get to him. And it took over 45 minutes for them to get to him. And his heart kept stopping and stopping. And then it was becoming longer in between when it would stop and when it would start up again. So they had um, a neonatologist come in. They had, they brought in, the, the whole room was full. So there was, again, the neonatologist, there were the special nurses because, you know, they knew the baby was going to be in trouble. So they had two surgeons, they had the anesthesiologist, they had, oh my gosh, so many people in the room. And I'm just bawling the whole time because, you know, they weren't even, I was asking like, what's going on? What's going on? And they weren't even, cause you know, you're awake the whole time. I just kept asking like, what's going on? What's going on? And they, and they, you know, the, the anesthesiologist just kind of kept like massaging me. And like, he kept like touching my face, like, as if like, like to like try to calm me down you know, cause they're, they're behind you. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, but no one was answering my question. I don't think they wanted to tell me what was going on. And my husband, you know, I'm hysterical. My husband was hysterical, just sitting there. You're just crying because you're like, what's happening with my baby. So they finally got him out and he was blue, not responsive. Um, they brought him right over. So they have the sheet up, you know, in front of you. They brought him right over to like, you know, here, but a few feet away. They, um, they did CPR. Um, his first APGAR score was uh, two. Um, and he, they had, they were bagging him, you know, they were breathing for him. They were giving him CPR, chest compressions. Um, I heard them, they were smacking him. Um, they held him upside down. They like everything. And, and I could watch, I was watching this the whole time because all you had to do is turn your head and you know you have use of your arms during the c-section so I had moved the paper back so I could see them doing that and um and then uh he finally finally let out a cry and I was but I was crying so hard that I could I didn't hear it so then the anesthesiologist was like mom, he cried, he cried. And I thought they were lying to me because I was so upset. And I was like, no, he didn't cry. <laughs> and they're like, no, he is, he's crying, he's crying. And oh my gosh, when you finally hear the, your, that cry from your baby, cause you're like, you're, I was convinced he was dead. You know, you're just, so he finally cried. And then they were like, but they didn't even let us see him anything like that. They had to bring him right 
right to the, the NICU, you know, the special care nursery to make sure his airway was cleared. Um, just, they just kept suctioning him. Um, they had to give him oxygen. Um, and, um, you know, he was jaundiced too. Um, and then his APGAR score um, went up to, like it just kept climbing then. So then it was, it was he was born and his APGAR score was a two and then a four, five minutes later. And then, um, and then he kind of kept improving a little bit, but they did give him a feeding tube. Um, so he was on oxygen, a feeding tube, a heart monitor. Um, they had him under the billy lights for um, his jaundice. And then we couldn't, um, we couldn't see him or anything like that or hold him. Um, so we just, you know, it took them a long time to close me up, a long time. So they were closing me up from the C-section and uh, my husband wasn't even allowed to be with the baby. So they had, my, they had sent my husband back to our hospital room and he said he just sat there and cried um, because he didn't know what, because you know no one's really telling you like what's good. They're just focused on the baby, you know? So kind of like getting him, making sure he's okay. So then um, they sewed me up and brought me to the room and they said that he, and at that point they said he was, you know, stable, but I couldn't, we couldn't see him or hold him or anything. So it wasn't until the next morning that um, we were able to hold him, but he still had the feeding tube. He was on oxygen, um, but he was alert. He was really alert. Um, and they said he had kind of started to cry a little bit, which is good. Um, and then a few hours after that, at 10 a.m., they took out his feeding tube and um, he was able to sustain himself off off of oxygen for short times. So um, I had nursed him a little bit wow. and he actually had a really good latch. Um, and, you know, yeah, I was able to nurse him and then, but they had to put him back on oxygen. So then he was, you know, basically like longer and longer, he was able to go without mm -hmm. oxygen until by that evening he was, he didn't need a feeding tube and he didn't need oxygen anymore, but they still had him on the heart monitor um, pretty much for th about three days in total. He was in the, the nursery, the NICU. Um, and so how long were you in the hospital? Four in days. Four days. Okay, that's not that bad, right? No, no, mm -mm, no. So, yeah, he recovered, you know, relatively quick. Yeah, 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 oh. yeah. I'm surprised I can like get through the story now without crying, but I couldn't for a long time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Wow. That, yeah. And how old is he now? So he's 15 months <laughs> and he's a little, oh my gosh, hurt, a little tornado. <laughs> <laughs> I can <laughs> imagine. Yeah, it's walking and talking and destructive and he's great now. He's yeah. great. So he had a few, um, you know, he had to do like a few EKGs, had to go through a few tests, um, you know, for his heart. Um, but, you know, he was good. Yeah. Better for that. So tell me about um, about you. How how did you recover from C section? What was it like to go through the whole? It was, thing? It was hard because it was during. So the first one, I had a little bit more help because it was not during a pandemic. But the second time, um, you know, it was during the pandemic, it's a, he's a newborn. So we really didn't allow many people in the house. You know, and the first time, all I had was the newborn. So it's okay, you know, it's just you and the one baby. But the second time I had, you know, my son had, had it was two, two years, eight months old, it mm -hmm. was my older one. And mm -hmm. then I had the newborn. Yeah. So it's, it was tough. <laughs> it was a little tough. Yeah. But you had help, right? Despite a little bit of help, yeah. Between uh, my mom, my mother-in-law. Um, yeah. And yeah, I think coffee, it's lots of lots of caffeine. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to look how long did it take for you to recover from your C-section? Um, when could you already walk, and when you were back to normal, more or less? So I was able to walk. Um, well, because of the C-section and everything that had happened, they had given me um, a uh, 
a catheter. So I didn't have to walk for almost 24 hours um, because it was such an, it wasn't just a regular C-section, it was so invasive. Um, so I didn't have to walk like to the bathroom or anything like that until the next day. So it was about 24 hours that I had to walk, um, but it was so painful. Oh my gosh. Um, and then um, in the hospital for four, four days, I came home and uh, still in a lot of pain. I was still, I was really swollen too, really, really swollen. And my whole stomach was bruised. My whole pelvis was bruised. Um, and then, you know, I don't know, you just kind of, you're a mom. Yeah. So you, you, you have to do it. You have, you have to take care of your children. Yeah. So, you know, you just do what you, you have to just do. get through it. You do what you have to do. Um, but it was definitely a good, I would say at least six weeks before I felt okay enough to like go out, like push a stroller, like that kind of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. drive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have you noticed any mood swings or any kind of, you know, baby blues after the first or the second time? Yeah. Um, no, not really. Um, so <laughs> there were like periods of kind of like mourning that I had to like, um, okay. So, <laughs> so after the second, not, not really after the first, after the first, I was okay. I was just, I was emotional. Like I just, I wanted my mom a lot after wow. my surgeries. Um, so, but during this, after the second one, um, I remember going into Walgreens for something and uh, my husband and the kids were in the car and I went into Walgreens and I was just walking really slow and I needed like like shampoo or something. And this was only, this was only after I had been home less than a week. So I was in so much pain. I was still walking slow and I had a bottle of, I had like a bottle of shampoo in my hand and like a few other things. And I dropped something <laughs> and I just stood there and I just looked at it on the ground and the, someone was walking towards me and was like, do you need me to get that for you? And I <laughs> started crying and I was like thank you I just had a c-section and <laughs> and my kids were in the car oh my gosh and that was so that that moment started off it was like two days of crying like a lot yeah. of crying yeah and then after that you know I was okay yeah I was okay yeah. so thankfully thank thankfully 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 I did not suffer from any postpartum you know depression anxiety mm -hmm. yeah and so you're in where are you now New Jersey. New Jersey, okay. Yeah. Um, so how much did it cost? There was insurance and yeah, so insurance did cover a lot of it. I think it was a total my second one, my second C section. I don't remember what the first, the second C section, just with and the hospital cost, I think out of pocket it was a total of ten thousand dollars. Wow. Ten thousand. And this is with insurance, right? Right. And how much do you pay for insurance monthly? So it was about $1,100 a month for the three of us, my husband, I, and our toddler. Right. So it's about around $300, $400 a month uh, per person, but then you had to pay $10,000 for C-section, including everything, right? Yeah. Hospital Does that include checkups as well during pregnancy or they're separate? So, um, no, that, that was separate. That was, and that, that was all covered by insurance. I don't even think I had oh, during okay. my, through my routine checks with the OB. I don't, I don't even believe I had a copay. Oh, okay. So that's good. Um, have you noticed any change in, in your endometriosis or any symptoms that you have after, after the second birth? I have a lot of, I still get pain. It's funny where my right ovary was. I still get pain there. Um, but not, oh my gosh, it's like a fraction of what it was before I had it removed. Um, but my C-section, um, it felt like where I had the C-section scar after my first C-section, that healed up pretty well. After the second one though, it's still, still, this is 15 months later, it's just numb and it's um, like the skin is just more, puffy and a and it hurts still a little bit around it like I can't wear like any like low cut underwear or pants anything like that it just feels very weird like against the scar so things have to be a little 
little higher, <laughs> a little higher up. Right. And, and is, did they cut the same place where the second was or did they cut different? Yeah. Places? Okay. Because I have no idea. So it's a stupid question, but. No, uh, no, it's not. It's not a stupid question. No, not at all. Okay. Maybe that's why, right? Because it's maybe the same place. That's why it takes longer maybe to. Yeah. Hear. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So do you, um, would you have any message or advice for women with endometriosis? Um, definitely talking to people, um, but be careful of support groups because <laughs> I had tried a few support groups and it was a lot of no offense. No, this is not meant to be disrespectful or anything. It was a lot of like doom and gloom. Um, so I found like that was not a good fit for me being in a support group because it was a lot of women that, that were like having like the worst of the worst time. And that's why they needed the support group. I found just, just talking to like people, you know, specifically, like if I have a friend who has endometriosis or, you know, a cousin or something like that, like, um, and just kind of being open. Um, I was in, you know, counseling for a while. I saw a therapist, um, cause it's very emotionally draining to be in pain every single day. It's very, very draining. And, you know, you can't tell from the outside, you know, if you break your arm, right? Like you walk down the street with a cast, people open doors for you because they can see it would be hard for you. If you wear a cast, people are assuming that you're in pain. So they go a little bit easier on you. But if you look totally normal, you, you're not wearing a cast, you're not limping. Um, you know, people assume like, oh, they must feel good and not know like the, the extent of how just the pain and, and just how draining it is to be in that, that pain every, from morning till night, it's, it's bad, but also don't lose hope. I got pregnant. So in, and then in between the two boys in um, November of 2018, I had a, a miscarriage, um, but I, you know, I was able to get pregnant three times with one ovary. Yeah. Lucky, lucky lefty. <laughs> my lucky left <laughs> over me. Right. So. Yeah. so there's yeah a lot of hope there thank you so much i think it's very motivating and inspiring story